this is going to be a three-month consolidated review of what it's like to own a BMW M235i. It is first to note, uh, because you bought an M235i, your entire ownership of this vehicle, uh, you'll get ridiculed for not buying a real M car. Uh, that's something we'll cover later on in the video. To start things off, uh, we'll cover the bad news first. And to be honest, I don't really have that much. Uh, I haven't had any issues with the car uh, so far in three months, which isn't that long, but you know, people make BMWs sound like such a headache that you can't go five days uh, without any problems. What I think it really comes down to is finding one that's well maintained, taken care of, probably low miles, hasn't had the opportunity to get absolutely beat on yet. Um, if you do that and take proper precautionary maintenance yourself, you'll probably be just fine. But just like with any vehicles, um, there is a chance that you could have your fair share of problems. And it is to note, because it's a BMW, if you do run into problems, it's not, it's not a shocker that it's gonna be a little more expensive than a Honda Civic, if you will. Uh, this BMW, in fact, does have an N55 variant uh, inline six. Uh, counterpart to the N54, which was notorious for all types of problems and breaking the bank, causing people to go bankrupt. Um, not to say that this engine doesn't have its own set of issues, but it's more straight away from the engine. Like this car is notorious for having busted charge pipes um, because they're kind of just made out of a thin piece of plastic. That's something that you would like to get taken care of before boosting your car. Um, above stock numbers. Running stock, you should probably never have any problems with it, but if you're to put a tune, get a larger turbo, the charge pipe is something you're gonna wanna fix because inevitably it, it will break eventually. It's not a question of if, but when. Speaking of stock numbers, this car is quoted at 320 horsepower and 320 foot-pound feet of torque. Uh, not insanely high numbers in today's standards, but it's definitely a quick car. And if you get the X drive, it launches pretty hard. This car did come with the option of getting a six speed manual or an eight speed automatic transmission. I obviously got the automatic transmission for this car. I never said I would get an automatic BMW, but I'd always had um, manual S10s, manual Mazda Miatas. And uh, after having the opportunity to drive this, and feeling the way it shifts, which we'll go over in a couple seconds, I I was pretty impressed. It just shifts so quick. Uh, I've never had an automatic transmission like that. Uh, with the cars fast enough, it, it's not that boring. And it is to say zero to 60 time with the eight speed automatic transmission is around 4.5, which is it's pretty quick. I mean, people are gonna say, oh, that's low numbers, but on the average, day-to-day -day driving car four and a half seconds is pretty quick for a zero to 60 time back on the topic of not buying a real M car no matter what car you buy you're always gonna get hate it people are just people love judging you to be honest, the difference in price point for the M235i and the M2, at least in 2023, isn't enough for me. Uh, I picked this car up for just over $30,000. If I was gonna go buy an M2 with the same amount of miles, same condition, I'm looking at around fifty-five dollars to $60,000, almost double. The performance difference in these two cars is not almost double. Uh, the M2 makes around 40 more horsepower and 40 more foot-pound feet of torque. It ain't there. I mean, yeah, you can change in your variable suspension. You've got more access to tuning, fine-tuning your numbers and performance. But for a daily driver, um, they're they're both doing sub four and a half seconds, zero to sixties. You know, this does have all-around set Brembo brakes. This does have forged internals for if you decide to boost it. Um, it's a very solid car. And like I said, for the price difference between an M235i and an M2, it just isn't enough for me.
I might catch hate and be like, oh, you're a broke boy. You just couldn't afford an M2. You can't afford a real M car, yada, yada, yada. Who cares? I'll keep commenting your hate. You're probably making your hate comments in a Kia Soul for that matter. But for the average person that's looking and wants to know the difference, eh, like I said, it's up to you. If I know where I'd put my money at and I would just tune the M235i and be at the same performance level, if not more than the M2 for less than, for less of a price. In conclusion, uh, the car has treated me very well. I haven't had any mechanical problems, issues. Uh, like I said, if you get one that's taken care of yourself and you do the proper maintenance and preventive maintenance, you should be fine. Uh, it's a nice budget M car, performs very well. It's very quick, it's very fast. And I think it's a good looking car. It it's not as aggressive as the M2. I will admit the M2 is a little bit wider, um, but to be honest, like I said, you're double the price point. Um, if you can settle with the hate comments and people shitting on you for not having a real M car, I'm very impressed. I love it so far and uh, we'll do another, another update in a couple months and uh, I've got some mods coming that I'll document along the process as well.